We watched the warm-ups. Bob Spaulding uh, was having a lot of trouble, but he's done one thing right already. He's going to make Danny Wiseman finish on that right lane. That's right. The choice is his because he finished higher in the standings, so Danny Weissman has to do what Bob Spaulding wants to do, start on the left lane, finish on the right. And the four-pin stands for Weissman, that graphic showing that he split evenly. However, two of those three strikes on the right lane were on the crossover side, so a little bit of a deceiving stat there. That's true. The right-hand lane has been the most troublesome. Lanes 33 and 34 here at Hollywood Bowl. Cross lane at the four pin. With the ball that goes dead straight at those spares. A little average builder out there for you people. You know, it's kind of interesting. People ask me, they say, well, you know, if the guys pick up a spare ball, they can go straight and know where it's going. Why don't they use it for their strike ball? Well, the answer to that is because when they throw it to the, in the pocket area, just like in your tip, sometimes that ball that goes the straightest doesn't hit very well. Not that yours didn't hit, Mike. I didn't mean oh, it that I, I, way. I never tried to take anything you say personal. I mean, <laughs> see, as Bob Spaulding goes high and leaves only the three pin. Bob's ball at about the 50, what, 56 foot mark, somewhere in that neighborhood, is just going what we call a rollout. It's starting to hook, getting all its revolutions too early, loses its momentum, and goes straight on the back. That's a rollout, so he's losing energy. We're going to take a look at the game of Mr. Spaulding. And watch, he's got a very good upright stance here. You can see he uses his upper body strength very well, gets over his legs well. You see the height of the backswing? A little more than I would like to see, but it's today's game. But right there, he doesn't stay with the shot long enough, in my opinion. The ball comes off his hand too soon. He doesn't chase the ball down the lane with his hand, which creates kind of a flip shot there and loses ball speed. That one rolled out to miss the head pin, the one, two, four. Uh, that's an awful hard shot to play. The only way to play the rollout is go way deep inside and let the ball roll out high flush. Uh, where he's playing now, here's another look at that last shot. Now watch the ball, watch the arc of the ball. Here you can see it's turning, turning. Now it starts to roll and just straightens out. It doesn't continue to hook. And gets a good break, knocking out the 10 pin, leaving the one, two, four. Everything's gonna be an adventure for Bob because the ball's gonna roll out even on his spares. Well, is Danny going up? Yes, he is. He's going in front of that ball, return again. He was practicing this while we were away on the practice pair off to the side. He was working on this shot. Let's see if he's very comfortable, more comfortable now than he was before. There we have it. Leaves the uh, 6, 9, 10. They're all in a bunch down there for Danny, and he's an excellent spare shooter. He will stand left, pick up his spare ball, throw it hard and straight. Hit either side of that six pin will be a winner for him. On the left lane, which has given them less trouble. And still does. Danny Weissman just keeps rolling along. He's won eight consecutive televised matches now, and uh, he just keeps working his way up the ladder. You know what he does? He qualifies, I think, fourth or fifth on so purpose, so he just kind of add on right that streak. There. Well, Houston tried that last week, though, and it didn't work. Well, let's see if Mr. Spaulding can get something going here. He's got to put some pressure on Weissman, and that's just not going to happen when the ball, he can't control the break point. The, the break point is going to be at a different spot down the lane where it starts to roll out. You don't know where it's going to end up. Just depending on whether he throws a little harder or a little slower. But All right, for the spare, only the three pin here. Shouldn't be much of a problem for him. And has it. There's his fiance, Tana Fulmer. And this is Mike Durbin along with Earl Anthony. We're coming to you live from the Hollywood Bowl in Portland, Oregon, the City of Roses. It's the championship round finals of the Oregon Open. And in our opening match, Danny Wiseman defeated Tommy DeLutz. And right now, he leads by one pin over Bob Spaulding in the fourth frame of the second game. No, it's kind of interesting, Mike, as none of the top five that we have on the telecast today has even been in the top 24 yet this year. There's his first strike of the match, and that was a powerful hit strike there, Mike. But even that ball, when it didn't look like rolled out right at the very end, still was enough to get the five out. 
Well, he struggled and struggled, but he's still very much in this match. Well, there's there's, a, good there's look a view I want to see of how many steps he's taken here. Watch him kind of slide that left foot a little bit. So it's three steps is what you're saying. Yeah, One, you're right. Two, three steps. Three. Boy, he's got it done. Now. I tell you, Brian Voss played this way last night, and I was really impressed. I watched all eight games of match play last night, and here's another look at that shot. And Brian Voss played this exact same shot with and just dominated the field. He made a tremendous move and almost led the tournament. Wow. Four steps standing at the back of the approach on one lane. Three steps standing in front of the ball return on the other lane. Is that versatile or is, uh, is he just confused? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the last time I saw someone use this type of versatility was Don Johnson at the Tournament of Champions one year. Hall of Famer Don Johnson, I should say. Uh, when he was playing the, like the fifth arrow on one lane and, and playing out over the channel on the right hand lane actually throwing the ball in the air over the channel pointing it up off the edge of the lane and he playing. could do that he, he could, could do, do that, that. he yeah. was what a talent he was huh all right here we go Danny shot this on the right hand lane to see if he can pick it up on the left lane this is this can be chopped you have to be careful six nine ten cross lane going straight at it look out oh boy you saw that halfway down the lane slides a six in front of the nine well, Earl, your uh, prognostication abilities continue to dazzle us all. Bob Spaulding. Here's a look at that last shot. The ball just skidded on him. Remember, he almost chopped it on the right-hand lane, so he gave it more room and didn't quite get back. Big opportunity for Mr. Spaulding. Right Is this here. a different ball here? And he had a disappointing loss last year to Mike Albee. I talked to him about losing there and had if he had recovered. Yeah, basically that, that that basically took maybe a week. You know, I I did everything I could that game. There was nothing to do. That was kind of like fate. You know, that was supposed to be at that time. I made good shots. I made him strike twice in the tenth. You know, that's in the past. Talking about his loss at the Tournament of Champions in Chicago last year to Mike Albee. Bowled a great game and just didn't win. Oh, how about this now? This is a guy that's found a way to make it work. We keep talking about this. This is a shot maker's link edition. Here's a look at it. Well, Danny Wiseman's streak is in jeopardy through five frames. He trails by 24 pins. We'll be back after this. And Danny Wiseman again three stepping in on lane 34 in front of the ball return. Moving to this deep angle, almost setting down on the left channel. But it's working. Well, it's kind of an amazing shot. You would never see this 10 years ago.